Right, welcome back to another episode of Break 40, where I, as an average golfer, try and go round nine holes of golf in 40 shots or less. But this time we're out in Portugal. We're at Quinta de Marina, courtesy of Glencore Golf. I've just completed phase one of this, which was the front nine. I finished plus four, and we're about to kick it off on the 10th hole here, which is another par five. And that par five is a real interesting one that uh, I learned to play uh, over the next few days, because there's a lot of water that you'll see come into play off this tee shot it's on the right hand side and it's blanked from view so the shot here is very much a left to right without going too far right and uh, ending up in the water but i can assure you this was pretty much position a off the tee and first part complete but that's not where it ends because again you see water on the right and again pretty much hidden away from the low camera handle is water on the left as well i hit a seven wood and again, couldn't have hit that any better really and got myself in a good position to play a wedge into another guarded small green, which, uh, yeah, surrounded by water again. But I've only got a pitching wedge in hand. It's all about gauging distance and um, decent pickup. If you watch part one, I was uh, struggling a tad in terms of my swing. It gets a little bit better in this nine. And it's a good enough start, a really good golf hole. I'm pretty much sure this must be the signature hole at uh, Quinta de Marina. But anyway, I've got a birdie putt from, uh, well, what is it, 25, maybe 30 foot away. This is all downhill to the hole. And uh, as you can see, fairly rapid. A little bit of a fiddly one still left mind that's three or four foot and as ever with these what i try and do is just keep that club face square and aim at the middle as long as there's no huge obvious break right so a good start to the back nine with a par five another one coming up now this is very much a severe dog leg right to left and the idea is to keep the ball as tight to the tree line as you can that is the shortest route and uh, maybe just got a little bit too greedy and I think I'm going to be blocked out in terms of my next shot. And yet yeah, the green is tucked away to the left, which we can't see. So I play an eight iron. I'm looking to get sort of uh, advanced another 150 yards down. And to be honest with you, it, even looking back, really nice swing. I'm happy with that. And uh, I hang on for a little while because I feel as though I've perhaps hit it too well. And uh, yeah, we lost the audio, hence this voiceover. But what I'm basically saying is that I should have a good angle into the flag. And it pretty much perfect. This is where you'd want to be. Uh, ideally, if the tee shot was uh, a bit more in play, then we'd have been a bit further down than this. But I've got a seven iron in hand. And uh, just a weird swing again, you can see from it, it's the ball does okay. Um, but watching this video back, I realized that uh, the swing was pretty much all over the place for this first 18 holes that I played on day one at uh, Kinsa de, de Marina. And um, a good bit of waffle there from me, can't remember what I was saying. But essentially, I'm on the green, there was a tear in, the, in this green, and it's very much a, sort of the first half of this is flat, and then it runs very much downhill and gathers into the hole. So you can see a little very tentative uh, put there. And it starts then gather down and I've left it short, unbelievably, uh, almost difficult to do so. So we've left a, uh, again, another little fiddly one, but no messing around. Let's just go for it. Let's just go straight at the hole, keep that club face square. And I walk off with another pass. So two pars to start the back nine. Uh, reasonably happy you can see the sun going down the shadows are appearing this is a really good golf hole again i'm going to mention the word dog leg because this is a severe uh, right to left you'll see very shortly the idea is, is to get the drive to the top of the brow this is the first day that i played this hole so i wasn't really sure what to lay over the top so it was just a case of down the middle and a really solid drive um and what i later found out so that that then reaches the brow and kicks down and i ended up in a real good position i played this hole um on two more occasions and i never got into as good as a position as i am right now um i only left a fairly short wedge in hand there's a 
kidney shaped green, big green, a lot of um, distance between the front and the back of it. And the pin is somewhere in the middle. This is a notable part of my game which needs improving. So real good opportunity uh, to get the ball within a realistic birdie chance. And I'm talking about, for me, I think if I can get that kind of, that should be a 15 to 20 foot putt. Uh, instead, what I've done, and I can't remember again what I was waffling on about, but just a little tug to the left-hand side, and I shouldn't be making a chip from, from that kind of distance out. Anyway, chip itself was uh, executed quite nicely, and um, but now I'm making looking at trying to make a single putt to save par. I'm going to go back to that error in the wedge shot. It shouldn't be. This shouldn't be for par, realistically, from that kind of distance. This should be a birdie kind of chance. Anyway, took a little bit of time over it. The greens were really, really good. And just kept it on the high side, um, which, you know, just didn't break as much as I thought. Decent pace. But unfortunately, you walk off with a bogey from position A in the middle of the fairway. So... Again, I can see my mumbling something and uh, it won't have been positive, I can assure you of that. Right, you'll see a buggy down the left-hand side. Um, somebody just waiting for us to play, driving up the other way. So a little bit of a nervy on this again, having not played the hole before. Seemed very tight off the tee. And what I later found out was it probably isn't driver to play, but I really it's a solid ball here. And... Um, Got into a good position. This hole plays out onto the horizon of the ocean there in the backdrop. Stunning golf hole, especially at this time of the evening. And again, um, I had a kind of 56 wedge, not a lot in hand. But again, I learned a lot from playing this hole on day one. And you'll see very shortly what I learned. So decent smooth wedge, throw it up high. Uh, I knew the green was narrow and I thought this was absolutely perfect. Landed on the front half of the green, and my continual watch there is because it just keeps on going. It was impossible to stop, and uh, I am off the backside there. You can just see the top half of my body, and trust me, I'd landed that before the flag. Anyway, learn from that over the next couple of days. But a chip shot with a an awaiting audience uh, at the back of me there, and uh, I was quite pleased. I stood up to the pressure, and that's a decent, um, decent chip shot. It just leaked out a little tad. You're on the upslope down there. I was also in the rough, so all things considered, this was good. But yet again, having to try and make um, a 10, 12 footer when I have just been pretty much 90 yards away off the tee anyway. Decent stroke, and right in the middle of the hole, and um, relieved to come off there with a par. Today's video comes to you in association with long-term channel travel partner Glencore Golf Holidays, and we are at Quinta da Marina in Cascai, Portugal. The hotel and golf course have been a superb place to play and stay in the Portuguese sunshine, and the proximity to Lisbon Airport and nearby Cascai make it the perfect European golf destination. So if you like what you see in today's video, then make sure you click on the link in the video description below or head on over to glencoregolf.com for more booking information. So scoring not good, but you're watching back, you can see what the problem is with my game, driving the ball realistically daft decent in good positions and then not getting in good positions with short wedges in hand anyway this is a seven iron it's 150 yards it's all carry over a, a ravine and i struck this so solid there was this is the kind of this bounce right in front of the flag and i can't see it land but um we're at now the back side of the hole and the pitch mark was about where i'm stood now it had run right past it so really pleased with you can see two people top left of screen that's where the tee box is again a stunning golf hole but you really have to hit a decent iron because between where they are stood and where i am the or the green there is no room for error at all anyway just watch this yeah i stand back in amazement at just how quick that was and again 
very learn quickly just how quick these greens are. <laughs> and yeah, that's my kind of motto with this whole thing. It's just like I said, point back at the middle. I knew having watched the putt go by, there wasn't a great deal of break. And it was a case of just uh, being positive. Anyway, we got the par. That cast motion over the top in terms of my swing. And um, this was supposed to be an iron shot, a very short 260 yard par four, all about position. Um, I managed to find the rough, although based on the swing, it could have been a lot worse. The idea with this is again, the greens are quite small, so the course is not long, but um, the greens are really small and it's quite a decent shot this to be honest with you again at the flag and out of the rough it managed to just uh, it pull managed to pull up quite nicely and we've got um well an opportunity for birdie super impressed with these greens though like i said this was uh, this was day one i stayed here for four or five days after this oh my word that's a tough one to take that's half a roll off going in and making birdie instead we walk away with par but after the tee shot it was pretty rough to be honest with you i'll take that and then we walk on to a uh, a little par three nothing going on really i don't like those trees they're sort of the left tree above my cap is my line to take the ball on to, uh, over the top of that and again i've sort of got that cast in motion at the top pull it to the left I caught the top of the trees and um, I don't I'd hit a provisional ball actually but when we got down there or walked down the pathway we'd uh, the ball had come to rest I'm totally blinded by uh, to the green so it's just a case of punch it down there as close to those trees on the left hand side as I could to get as close to the hole as I could and that was as close as I could get so now we're playing hole three even a camera woman's having a bit of a wobble here. I think that was bladed off the bottom a little bit looking back. Um, it doesn't look too bad of a shot in many ways, but yeah, I think I look pretty disgusted at this point that I've took three shots to advance 139 yards. And um, this is to make bogey. It's really tough golf, isn't it? Because, you know, I haven't played fantastic, but I've I got half decent nine going uh, in terms of scoring. And then all of a sudden, you walk off with a five on a 139-yard par three. Um, it is a bit of a, a kick, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not happy. Right, so this is um, 17th hole, makes its way slightly from left to right. Sort of suits me. I've got a lot of fairway on the left-hand side if things go wrong. But then it slides back to plan. And uh, well, we're pretty much middle of the fairway. Uh, for our next shot in, which I believe was only a, I think it was a nine iron we had left in, could have been a pitching wedge. And uh, what the heck was that swing? Just really weird. I don't know what's going on right now. I think it's getting late in the day and I'm certainly tiring. Um, so I walked away in disgust to find the ball short of the bunker. I suppose that was a good news, but still left a real tricky one. And uh, got a bit of a backstop here. And you'll just see the ball starts to come down. It starts to listen and comes back to the hole. So not a bad chip shot. We've got this now to make a par, a single put par yet again. Not good golf and. And yet yeah, that was never on line. But more importantly, just look at how quick that is. I mean, that is ridiculous. I felt as though I hardly touched it, and even watching back, I felt as though I hardly touched it. But like I said, we we, we learned after this. This was day one, and this was Mez rescuing me again with a real solid putt straight in the middle of the cup to walk away with a bogey. So on to 18, and 18 is um, uh, got a slight bit of shape from right to left. So I set up here to hit, as you all know, I like to hit a fade, um, but I'm attempting to move the ball from right to left that's the what the practice swing you can see the wind blowing on my shirt starts to pick up a bit 
but I don't. It's kind of it's blocked out a little bit, and it's it, it comes back a tad, but it, it basically goes in the line that I aim at, which was at those trees, and I was trying to move it back into the left hand side, but uh, not no not something I could achieve. You really can see the difference in the wind picking up. Uh, this is about eight o'clock in the evening now. We just got off a plane at three o'clock, so we're uh, we're starting to fatigue a little. And I think from memory, that swing is, yeah, testament to that, really. You can see the sort of game sort of unravel as the holes go on. And whilst this back nine started with a little bit of uh, positivity, you can see that I start to struggle as we go on. So again, trying to make a uh, an up and down from not a nice position. Good positive stroke. Again, we had a little bit of a backstop here. Um, so it comes back a tad for us. The one thing you can't do there, obviously, is, is stick it into the bunker in front of you or anything like that. So it's got to be, it's got to be a positive stroke. Can we finish off with a par? And the answer to that is no. It was a good little putt, little sneaky one, slid away. Never mind. Right, that is my second attempt at break 40 at Quinta de Marine. It was the back nine, of course, and, uh, well, I'm pretty sure that I didn't manage it. Wasn't quite on the game today, and, uh, well, we'll, we'll blame jet lag, I think, and a little bit uh, tired towards the end, no doubt, and the score waned a little bit. But anyway, very much enjoyed what we did here today. Don't forget what we said earlier about Glencore Golf and Quinta de Marine. If you fancy a little bit of what you've seen today, then uh, make sure you go out and uh, check things out at Glencore Golf. And uh, I will be, that's my last attempt in playing the 18 holes here at Quinta de Marina, but I've got plenty more content to film over the next few days, plenty of club reviews. So keep your eyes peeled and no doubt I'll see you all tomorrow night.